everyone. Welcome to Frappe School. I am Lynette Sheridan and this is the first chapter in our sales management course. Today, we will be discussing sales territories and sales setting. By the end of the chapter, you will be able to map a sales territory and understand territory wise sales planning and configure selling settings. Star Electronics business not only has a local presence but is spread over multiple regions. Each region has a country manager and each customer is mapped to a country. John manages one of the company's main markets and he has three sales development representatives working under him. Star Electronics significant transactions takes place by selling their products through these channels that is retail store, e-commerce platform, sales team outreach and sales agents. Since transactions take place through varied channels, once a customer has placed an order, managing these customers as well as their orders would have become cumbersome if we would not have a proper mechanism in place. Thanks to ERP Next, we can streamline these operations in a systematic manner. This will also help the sales executives plan strategies and assign targets much more efficiently. Let's see how these aspects actually work in ERP Next. We can find sales territories by navigating to territory from the awesome bar. Let's go to the tree view of the sales territory list. A group territory can have sub-territories under it. When we open the territory tree, we can see existing territories that are added to the system. To add a new territory, we can click on New. Here, we can name the territory. For example, we want to call it East Coast. And we can select the Group Node checkbox if this territory has sub-territories listed under it. We can save this group node once done. To add a sub-territory or a node territory under East Coast, we can click on it and then click on New. Name the territory, for example, New York City and save it. This will now show in the territory tree under the East Coast. Once we have named and added our territories, we can configure each territory. Let's open New York City for example. Here, we can assign someone as a territory manager to oversee this territory. Next, we will add a target for this territory based on item groups. We will first select an item group, for example, consumables. Then, we can either set a target quantity, suppose 10,000 units, or a target amount, or even both. Select a monthly distribution, which will help define how the target is distributed across various months. Once all the details are added, we can save these changes. Let's now see how territories get tagged while doing a sales transaction. Now, let's have a look at a couple of reports based on the territories and targets we just created. The first one we will explore is the Territory Wise Sales Report. We can navigate to it using the awesome bar. Once we open the report, we can see the territory wise segregation of the sales process. The report shows the opportunity amount, quotation amount, and billing amount per territory. We can even filter this report by customizing the date range. The next report we will explore is the territory target variance based on item group report. We can access this report by navigating in the selling module to the other reports section and clicking on territory target variance based on item group. 
When we open this report, we can see a month-wise report of the territory targets based on item group. For example, we can see here in the New York City and the consumables item group, the target for January is shown. And next to that, the target achieved till now in January is shown. The difference between the two is shown as the variance for January. Like this, month-wise reports are shown for the rest of the year. We can filter how we see these reports by changing to view by sales order, sales invoice or delivery note. This will calculate the target achieved accordingly. Or we can view the report quarterly, half yearly or even yearly. We can even show the report based on either the target quantity set or the target amount set. Now that we've seen how to set up sales territories, let's explore some settings that we can configure for the selling module as a whole. The first setting we'll explore is the customer default setting. Here, we can select how a customer ID will be generated by their name, a naming series, or if we want them to be auto named. We can also select a default territory and a default customer group. Next, we'll have a look at the item price settings. We can set the default price list here. If we would like the same item rates to be maintained in the quotation, sales order, and sales invoice transactions, we can enable the maintain same rate throughout sales cycle checkbox. Further, we can specify if the system should stop the transaction from being posted or just a warning message to be shown if the same rate is not maintained. We can even mention the role that enables users to override this setting. We can allow or disallow users from editing prices in sales transactions. If disallowed, prices will be pulled from price lists only. Next, we can make sure an item is not being sold at a lower price than the purchase item or the manufactured price by enabling the validate selling price for item against purchase rate or valuation rate checkbox. We can tick the calculate product bundle price based on child items rates checkbox if we want a product's bundle price to be calculated based on the items in that product bundle. This will essentially sum up all the items listed in a product bundle and add them to the total product bundle price. Lastly, let's configure the transaction settings. In the first two settings, we can customize if certain transactions can be created without being linked to others. For example, if we want to allow the creation of a sales invoice without an existing linked sales order, then we can select yes or no here accordingly. Similarly, we can choose if a sales invoice can be created without an existing linked delivery note. Next, we can select how often the project and company records are updated with the sales data. We can choose to have an update after each transaction daily or monthly. The next few checkboxes help us configure different transactions in different circumstances. For example, if we want to allow a single item to be added multiple times in a transaction, we can select this checkbox. Next, if we want to allow multiple sales orders to be created against one purchase order of the customer, then we can select this checkbox. We can also choose to hide a customer's tax ID in sales transactions. Lastly, the Enable Discount Accounting for Selling will enable additional ledger entries to be made for discounts in a separate discount account. This brings us to the end of the first chapter in our sales management course. 
I hope this helped you understand how to manage sales territories in ERP Next and how you can configure various settings in the selling module. You can read more about ERP Next on docs.erpnext.com. In the next chapter, we will discuss the sales team and sales partner management in ERP Next. Thank you.